Today I'm going to show you all how to make this flushing beam out of entirely scavenged materials. So while you do need a few tools and four screws, all the materials to make this were completely free. Okay, so to find a flushing beam, keep an eye out on some local construction sites, preferably those that are building like condos or apartments. And you're looking for a big stack of green tubes like that. Those are sewer, PVC sewer pipes. And they usually mess a few up and they throw them away. So we're gonna keep an eye out, aha, for some broken, messed up ones. And that is what we're gonna go scavenge. So we have located the scrap pieces that they are gonna throw away. There's also a dumpster over there. So sometimes you'll find broken pieces in the dumpster. Um, this piece is actually really great. It's bigger than most of the sewer pipe pieces, which are normally a 10 inch diameter. I think this is more like 12 and it's big, thick PVC. So this is a, this is going to make a pretty great flushing beam. You definitely want, I don't know, four or five feet long. This is almost too short, but we're going to use it anyway. So we're going to put it in the truck. Okay. So here's what you need to make this flushing beam. We'll start with the pipe. So this is a piece of sewer pipe that I found at a construction site. It's about four feet long. You need at least four feet, four to five feet. And it's probably about 10 inches in diameter. 10 to 12 is ideal. Don't go any smaller than 10. You need a drill and a drill bit. You need a countersink tool. You need some screws. You need painter's tape, a Sharpie, a Dremel tool. You could probably also use a something you could scrape the plastic with. I'm gonna smooth the sharp edges with this, so there's some other options, but a rasp, a, rasp, a file, anything, any kind of tool like that would probably work, but this is faster and that bit will chew through the plastic to round over the edges. I have a circular saw. You don't have to use a powered saw. If you don't have one, you can use a hand saw. I've got a tape measure, four bricks. That's just to help hold the, the pipe still so it doesn't roll around. This is a piece of angle iron. It's about two inches in, in width. Um, and it's just to draw a straight edge on our plastic pipe. This is a piece of bamboo. You could also use straight sticks or saplings. You probably need two pieces that are four feet long or so. We'll cut them down to the right length once we get this thing built. And then a two by four um, or a similarly sized wood. We're gonna cut it so it doesn't have to be exactly a two by four. You also absolutely need some safety glasses. Okay, so we're putting the bricks on either we're putting bricks on either side to keep the pipe still and then we can take our angle iron and when you set the angle iron down on top of this it kind of self-centers that angle makes it self-center so we know we're going to draw we'll be getting a straight line on the pipe So if you have a pipe that's thinner PVC, you're going to need to tape with painter's tape behind your cut so that the pipe retains its original shape. It may want to like kind of open up as you cut it and you need it to stay in the, the right shape and diameter so that you can cut the other side because we're going to be cutting this in half. So that's 27 and a quarter. So half of that is 13 and 5 eighths. So I'm sorry that I forgot to adjust the camera for this, but what we're doing is measuring around the outside of the pipe to find the circumference and then dividing it in half and marking that halfway point because we need to draw another line down the length of the pipe in order to cut it in half. So now I'm just using the angle iron or you could use a straight edge to connect those dots that you made at the halfway point so we have a nice straight line to follow to make our second cut okay so now we're going to cut our piece that we're going to cut two of these 
um, little little pieces and they're gonna hold our legs in place so I'm gonna just take my sharpie and just trace the inside of this like that and you could use a handsaw to cut this but we're gonna use what are we gonna use well you could use a jigsaw maybe a coping saw but we're probably we'll probably use a bandsaw okay we don't have to we have a jigsaw well, yeah we're gonna use a bandsaw because it's fast it's a lot easier you, do it? you can do it, sure. <laughs> cut this in half first, and then you cut, and, and then cut there, okay. and then you, you'll have smaller pieces to work with. Again, you absolutely do not have to have a bandsaw to get this done. We happen to have one, and it made the job faster and easier, so we used it, but you could totally use a hacksaw. Okay, so I've cleaned this portion of the inside of my pipe. Um, and the way this works is the legs will rest in here. So it'll be a tripod. So I need these two blocks. They'll be far enough apart that both legs can fit in there and the legs will just rest. When I made my first one of these, I put these up here like this and you don't want them too close to the top. You want them about, I don't know, probably about a foot down in here like that. So the first one needs to be about a foot away from the from the top of this. Because otherwise, when you are using it, you're too close, your body is too close to the legs. So I'm just using some painter's tape to hold these blocks in place so that we can set it on a table and they'll stay nice and in position while we drill holes for the screws. Make sure that when you get to this part, you start off by taping the block that's closest towards your body. Then you're going to take the diameter of the top of each of your sticks and add them together. And that's going to give you the distance from one block to the next. And I would probably add between a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. So we're putting two screws per piece per side. Um, they need to be as close as you can get them to the edge of the PVC. So they're stacked one on top of the other. You'll need to drill two different size holes if you have a regular type of screw. So you'll drill the hole through the PVC it needs to be the full diameter of your screw, so including the thread, and then the hole you drill into the wood needs to be the diameter of the main part of the screw without the threads. So this is the this is the countersink. It's like a round wedge and it enables us to make this fit flush against the plastic. You don't want anything sticking up um, that you might accidentally hit with your flushing blade and accidentally put a hole in your hide. So it's really important that um, there's no bumps or, or like nicks or anything in your plastic. So you don't want this sticking out. So you're gonna use a countersink. So now that I have all the holes drilled and the countersinks drilled, I can go ahead and put my screws in on this side. Then all that's left to do is to flip the beam around, drill holes on the other side, drill the countersinks, and set the screws. I'll show you what it looks like now. It looks like this. So the things we've got to do next, we've got to take this sharp edge off right here. All the sharp edges have to go away. And I'm gonna knock this corner off so we don't have such a sharp corner there. I'm just gonna round that off a little bit. 
and then we'll cut our legs and we'll be done. So um, you could leave it like this and use it from here, but you've got some dangerous spots on these. This edge is like really, really sharp. So we don't want to accidentally cut the hide. So now we have to take this sharp edge off of this PVC pipe so that we don't accidentally cut holes in our hide because we're going to be pinning the hide like between our body and this this beam in order to hold it in place while you while we flesh so we've got to knock this edge off and then this corner right here is a little bit uncomfortable when you're when you're leaning into this um, so we're going to just take just a little bit of that edge off um, so let me show you what you need to do this so we have a jigsaw jigsaw but you don't have to have this kid you don't have to have a fancy tool you can you can just use a hacksaw basically yeah a hacksaw Any, is good yeah thing. hacksaw would be a great option so to round over the edges to get that sharp edge off you've got a couple of options the last time i made one of these i used a dremel tool and i'll show y'all there's the head that i used but if you don't have a dremel tool that's okay you can use we're going to use a sander today so this is the sander we're going to use. Um, my dad thinks that this is going to do a better job. So we're going to see how it works. You could also probably use regular sandpaper or a rasp or a file, anything that's just going to smooth that sharp edge over. You don't have to go crazy. It just needs to be so that it doesn't cut you. So then just get this guy. So I'm just going to draw this little curve. I don't think we need to take much off, honestly. Like, I think it just needs to be like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. So that's, that's what I just drew. So I'm not taking much off at all. Just a little bit. Once you cut that piece off, you could take it. Well, I started to say you could take it around on the other side and use it to get that side just exactly like the sim same. Sim symmetrical? Is yeah. That what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you could. I mean, I don't really care if it's like perfectly. Sure. Doesn't have it doesn't to do matter. It. You know, yeah. it's utilitarian. Just, just so that it doesn't hurt you or the hide. That's the more important part, honestly, is the hide. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? You want to put it on the, should I put it on I the I think table? maybe uh, do it vertically and I'll hold it for you while you okay. cut it. If, or you want me to do it the, the first one? I, I think I, I think I got it. Should I go up this way, you think? Okay, let's scoot, let's scoot over so we're on frame. Okay. That's the way I'd go about it, I think. Or, or I can hold it horizontal too. If you, what do you think? I can lay it on the table and let's just see what it looks like laid on the table. See, that's actually more awkward. Yeah. 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 I think if you just hold it upright, and I'll just straight up and down. Yeah. Like okay. That. All right. That's good. Oh, hold on. So you definitely want to focus on the top third to two thirds of the beam. I wouldn't worry at all about smoothing the edges at the bottom. You just really want to focus on the parts of the beam that are going to be up against your body, specifically where the hide is going to be pinched between you and the beam. So unfortunately, the video I took of us cutting the legs to length got corrupted, but it's pretty simple. You just take a hacksaw. We used a special, pretty nice, like Japanese wood saw, um, and just cut them to about the length that you think they should be. And then you can totally play with them. I leave them on the long side at first until I figure out exactly how long I want them. And then I cut them down to size. Here's a little clip of the first flushing beam I ever made being put to use. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thanks to my dad for helping me build a much better version of this flushing beam and also for helping me film.